Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and today I'm going to show you how to install a dual channel Wi Fi and Bluetooth module in your PC. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be installing a Wi Fi card into our PC. Now, a lot of motherboards these days don't come with Wi Fi integrated, and also very few actually come with Bluetooth. So if you've got Bluetooth devices, maybe a keyboard or some AirPods or something along those lines, or you just want your PC in an area where you're unable to get a Ethernet cable, this is the perfect solution. Now this is from Ubit. There are many other devices available on Amazon.co.uk and around the world, but I will put some links for this particular one in the video description. Ubit are not a sponsor and they have not provided this free of charge for us, so anything I say in this video is completely my own opinion. And also the installation is a rough guide. Your motherboard may vary. I would certainly suggest that when you do this, check with your motherboard's installation guide just to confirm where the specific ports that are required are on your motherboard. So with that said, let's take a look at what we get inside the kit and then I'll go through the installation process. And also at the end, I'll show you how you can specifically choose the five gigahertz network to get those extra Wi-Fi speeds from your device. So it starts off with the packaging. This is pretty much as basic as it gets, but it gets the job done. It all arrived safely and securely, and there's tons and tons of little bits in there, so that is pretty excellent. So again, packaging, pretty straightforward, simple. Inside the box, we get a typical sort of thing from Amazon, where if you get any problems, you can contact the company directly. We get uh, actually a really, really good instruction manual, and it goes through in quite a lot of depth, and also in full color, showing you exactly how to set this up. So if you've got any problems, the user guide is probably your first point of reference if you've not already watched this video. Also in the package, we get a pair of screws for retaining the actual card into the PC. We get a pair of antennas or aerials. We get a USB cable. Now this part of the USB cable is actually for the Bluetooth side of the device. Because it is a multi-purpose device and it has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi is controlled via the PCI Express port and the Bluetooth is done via USB. So this cable will need to be actually attached to the card and you will need a spare USB type header on your motherboard. Also included is a handy screwdriver, which is a nice touch. There is also a mini backplate, so if you've got a smaller form factor PC like some of the Dell models like the SSF 910s, that kind of thing, if you don't have the full width then you can just change this bracket over on the card, that's a nice inclusion. There's also a driver CD. Now this has got the drivers on for both the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi, should you have a slightly older device or maybe you don't have access to the internet. Most modern versions of Windows, Windows 10, 1903 onwards, actually have the drivers baked in already for this particular device. So most likely you won't need this. If for some reason you don't have a CD drive, which a lot of us don't, you can actually download the drivers from a link which is actually in the installation guide, which again, I'll put in the video description so you can check it out for yourself. And last but not least is the actual card itself, which, is actually pretty tiny. This is designed to go in a full width PCI Express port and uses the PCI Express times one. Ideally in your motherboard, when you go to install this, you wanna install this as low as possible in the system. Some people will try and put it in the top slot, but sometimes you'll find that certain boards will share resources with that top slot. So personally, I would try and avoid that one. Again, do refer to your motherboard manual to see which slot is gonna be the best for you. Being that this is a relatively low demand device, even though it is on PCI Express, it is better to have it with a lower priority, i.e. towards the bottom of the motherboard. So looking at the card itself, on the rear, you've got the retention plate and also where the screw goes. You've got a pair of connections for antennas or aerials. The actual Wi-Fi part of this is actually based on the Intel 7625 chipset, which is a pretty universal chipset and has uh, been around quite a while and is very reliable. Speed-wise, you're looking at up to a theoretical 867 megabits per second on the five gigahertz networks and 300 megabits per second on 2.4 gigahertz networks, which is why we're gonna show you in the video later how you can force it to use those five gigahertz speeds. Towards the rear of the card, there is a little port here, which is where the USB cable plugs into, and then that is for the Bluetooth section, as we said earlier. So that is pretty much it. The only thing I dislike about this card is the fact it's on a green PCB. It would have been really nice to have seen that in a blacked out version. But again, because it's gonna be hopefully at the bottom of your PC, it shouldn't look too bad and generally will be covered up by things like the graphics card and that kind of stuff. The back plate as well also would have been nice if that was blacked out. But again, if you're feeling a little bit handy, you can always get a rattle can out and give it a dusting of paint. Also, if you do wanna change over the back plate, all you need to do is release two screws on the back 
on this back plate will come off very easily and then you can replace it with the half width one again to fit into those smaller chassis okay so we've got all the bits that we need so time to get it installed so this is our chassis this is going to be in the Sharkoon Rev 100 obviously your case may be different the first thing to do is to make sure your PC is shut down now even when the PC is shut down there still will be some residual power going through the motherboard so definitely remove the power cable from the rear or just switch it off I'm going to take out the cable altogether and as you can see the lights have gone off the motherboard you can always if you want to as well just press the power button just to discharge any additional electricity once you're happy that all the power is off you can remove the side panel screws in your case so we'll see again yours may be different but generally you're looking at two screws or two thumb screws for your side panel removal take the panel off and put it to one side so this is the bottom section of our motherboard and we're looking for a slot for our PCI Express. This is a times one slot. So you should find on your motherboard that you'll have one. I've got one in this bottom corner, which I'll try and point out. Hopefully you can just about see that is down in the bottom corner. Also as well, we need to locate our USB header. Now, unfortunately on this board, it's actually very nearby. And if I get a screwdriver, I can point it out to you. So with the screwdriver, there is our additional USB port there, which we can plug into. There is our PCI Express port, our times one slot. And again, we're going for the lower one. There is one actually at the top. Because of the way it will actually take resources from the system, we're going to go for a lower priority slot down here at the bottom. So what we need to do is to remove the back plate from the back section here. Fortunately, ours is already missing, as you can see. The screwdriver goes right through. But normally, it's just a single screw to remove that retention plate. Or you may have one which is fixed, which you have to wiggle and then pull out. So we're going to take our USB cable out of the packet. and just uncoil that slightly grabbing our Wi-Fi card so we're going to locate the USB ports on the uh, on the card there and then we just attach the cable which will only go in one way fortunately just make sure that's firmly attached so we've got our PCI Express port for the connectivity for the Wi-Fi and we've got our USB for connectivity for the Bluetooth. So depending on which way you want to do it, you can do it either way. You can put the card in first, or you can put the USB and cable in first. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to go ahead and put the USB cable in first of all. So taking note of the pin or lack of a pin on the USB, that is your orientation. So if you look on your motherboard, you should see the USB pins. There's nine pins with one missing. So that was pretty straightforward. We've plugged in our USB at the bottom there. So now what we need to do is to actually install the card. So lining up the card with the rear back plate. Gently push the card in until it's fully in and then take a screw from the kit or the one that you removed already. There we go, there is our screw firmly holding in our back plate. So while we've got this section out, it's probably a good idea to install the antenna. So we've got two plastic antenna, which I think is called either the F or S type connection. And all we need to do is to screw those on. And then route the aerials into the upward position. Wi-Fi antennas generally work better in this position with the Wi-Fi antennas up. Again, depending on your setup, some people may choose to have them sideways. There are various different uh, <laughs> documents and ways of working where people say one way is better than the other. But I would say the best thing to do is do some speed tests and actually see which position works best for you in your particular setup. So anyway, we've done everything we need to here. So we can reassemble everything and we can turn on the PC and then make sure everything works. So now we've got our PC installed and everything looks to be good. So let's go into Device Manager, make sure that everything is as it should be. So as we can see now, we've got the Bluetooth device, which is listed. So Bluetooth device, which is RFCOM protocol, and it's Intel wireless Bluetooth. So you should have extremely good compatibility. This is Bluetooth 4.2 rather than Bluetooth 5.0. If you want Bluetooth 5.0 or higher, you can buy more expensive cards, but for me personally, I don't think that's necessary just for keyboards and some audio devices. Also into our networking adapters. So we go to now showing the Intel dual band wireless AC7265. Oh, it looks like something else is still installing in the background there. 
And if we go into the Winter Wireless, this is where you can actually make it quicker. So what we can do is we go into Advanced and then go into your wireless modes. So if you go to NAC Wireless Mode and you can choose AC or N. If you choose AC, it will be the faster version. And if you go into the 802-102.11 or ABG wireless mode, you've got some options here. The fastest one is the top one. So if you've got a five gigahertz signal nearby and it's uh, within reach, you will get faster speeds if you select number one, the, the 802.11A. If you're not sure, I would suggest leaving it on either of these two dual band ones at the bottom. The one for the highest compatibility will be the very bottom one, number six, which supports the A, B and G networks and also would include things like N networks from a little bit further back. So again, entirely up to you which one you do. If you choose the five gigahertz one, it will select your five gigahertz network and be slightly faster in burst speeds. Uh, again, as long as your router is within distance. And all you do if you click on that, click OK, you'll find that your internet will briefly disconnect and it will switch bands. So this is now on the five gigahertz module. Uh, if we go back in again, go into properties, into advanced, and we'll change our value back to six. Click OK. Again, we'll lose disconnection. It will reinitialize the controller and then be in the standard kind of lower speed but more reliability mode. Okay, so there we go. Pretty easy to do and actually very easy to switch between different network types. Generally, you'll find that the wireless card will actually to try and detect the best option for you. So really you don't have to go tweaking in the settings too much unless you really want to. But again, it is there as an option. And being it's the Intel driver, it's really super stable, very reliable connectivity wise, and actually does get plenty of updates, so you shouldn't find any issues. So overall, very impressed. This card itself at the moment in the UK cost me around about 18 pounds from Amazon. Again, I'll put some affiliated links in the video description. So if you wanna pick one up for yourself, you can do. Ubit as a company actually do produce other faster cards, such as the newer Wi-Fi 6 standards, that kind of thing. So if you wanna check out one of those, you can do from the links below. But there we go, that's uh, pretty straightforward. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.